I'm actually like having such a hard time with this. I can't even tell you. I feel sick talking about it because the whole thing is so incredibly possible because we could literally sleepwalk into this Nazi fever dream by not understanding what he plans to do, even though he is telling us what he plans to do. And welcome to the Politics Girl podcast. I'm your host, Lee McGowan. Let's get into it. Last week, we talked about all the good things our current government is doing. This week, in contrast, we're going to talk about all the horrifying things the alternative to our current government is planning should they get back into power. Now, we had an episode at the top of the year about Project 2025, the conservative promise for America. And if you aren't familiar with Project 2025 or what the architects of this travesty truly want for the country and how prepared they are to make it happen, then I would highly recommend you go back and listen to that episode. It is a clear and planned takeover of the American government by people who no longer want to work under a functioning democracy, but under some form of authoritarian, kleptocratic theocracy. And the Republican Party are on board for all of it. Today, we're going to talk about the other half of the plan, something called Agenda 47, which is Donald Trump's personal plan. And now that he is the official Republican nominee for president of the United States, we need to understand exactly what he plans to do. To join us in this conversation, I have asked journalist Ahmed Baba to join us again. Ahmed is a guest we had for our Project 2025 episode, and he understands the playbook these politicians, and I use that word lightly, have laid out for our country. Ahmed is a columnist for The Independent, consultant for Our Common Power, and co-founder of Rant Media. An entrepreneur and media literacy consultant, his work has been seen in The New York Times, Washington Post, BBC, CBS, and Rolling Stone. His newsletter, AhmedBaba.News, can be found on Substack, where he does deep dives into a cross-section of topics. If Project 2025 intends to fundamentally destroy the federal government as we know it, Agenda 47 plans to reshape the country into something completely unrecognizable. So without further ado, please welcome my guest, journalist, entrepreneur, and columnist for The Independent, Ahmed Baba. Welcome back, Ahmed. Thank you for having me. Really excited to come back on. Had a great time last time. And the one I'd rather have existential dread conversations with than you, so... (laughs) I know it's exactly where we're at, right? I mean, thank you for coming back because the last time you were here, we talked in depth about the horrible Project 2025. And as I was saying in the introduction, if people didn't hear that episode, they really should go back and listen to it because we really need people to understand what the Republican Party and what these donors have planned. But today we're going to talk about the other part of the plan, which is really Donald Trump's personal plan for the country in the form of Agenda 47. Yeah, I mean... It really fills in the gaps, like where Project 2025, where we were talking about kind of those ideological underpinnings and really they laid it out in such detail. Agenda 47, a lot of it is videos he's posting, kind of declaring things. And then you'll see people on his staff, like they'll fill in the context on the website. So there's so much there. It's truly authoritarian and concerning. And I'm really glad that you wanted to dive into this deeper so that people can get a better grasp of what he's personally planning. Yeah, I can't believe how many people have never even seen it. You know, I went to the Agenda 47 website, but as I was looking, you know, to go to their original source, because I know what's in it, but I wanted to see their original source. One of the things I thought was such a trip is that they're selling merch now that says Agenda 47. Like, this is the thing. Like, the Trump campaign is selling Agenda 47 merch. Like, this is the plan. As both plans, Project 2025 and Agenda 47, both seek to dismantle the administrative state, or what Trump calls the deep state, right? Both projects, Agenda 47 and Project 2025, call for a purging of the federal government and federal workers through the reinstatement of something called Schedule F. Now, we talked a little bit about Schedule F in the Project 2025 episode, but would you mind breaking down briefly, in case people miss that, what the Schedule F situation really is? So Schedule F is essentially this executive order that Trump instituted at the end of his presidency that strips civil service protections from tens of thousands of career employees. These are people that provide the backbone of the federal government. They effectively ensure that when a new president comes in, the whole government doesn't collapse, right? So what Trump is trying to do and what he plans to do, it's outlined in Project 2025 and Agenda 47, is that he wants to come in and fire tens of thousands, and I saw recently listed up to 100,000 
civil service experts and then replace them with a quote unquote army of trained GOP loyalists that will then be inserted in there. Now, as we know, policy is personnel. So if you replace these career civil servants that just uphold the basic services that Americans get from their government with these rabid MAGA loyalists that are just going to be doing Trump's bidding, it's not sustainable for, for our country. And it's going to dismantle what he calls the deep state. But in reality, it's Trump going and trying to remove all the guardrails that were in place before. Because effectively, Trump's one talent, in my opinion, is that he exploits the weaknesses in people, the weaknesses in cultures and in systems. And I saw Susan Glasser reported hearing from a national security official from the Trump org that said a second Trump term would be like in Jurassic Park when the Velociraptor learned how to open the door. So it's like, This dangerous being now knows the tools to open that door, right? Now knows exactly what to do to fully weaponize government. And that's what uh, Schedule F would do. So really concerning stuff there at the top level that he'll then use as an arm to implement this agenda we're going to get into in a second. Yeah, exactly. So Schedule F was, like you said, an executive order that Trump put in at the end of his presidency and Biden uh, rescinded when he came into office. And then Trump would put back in with an executive order again when he came in. And it basically, like you said, it reclassifies tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of federal workers into what's called at-will employees, which essentially makes it easier for them to be fired for no reason. Now, non-political federal workers have had civil service protections in this country for almost 100 years, and that basically prevents them from being fired when a new administration comes in, because these are people that aren't political. They are people that are running all these government offices, and Trump wants to come in and purge just giant amounts of people after taking loyalty tests. So like if you're not completely loyal to him, he's going to get rid of you and fill it with just a list of people that they already have in line to take these jobs. Just mega loyalists who will toe the party line with a complete disregard for checks and balances, for the democratic system, for the way our government is supposed to work. And Democrats have known this is going to happen. And they have tried so many times to pass legislation to protect these jobs of these civil servants. So they aren't at the whim of whatever president happens to be in charge. But Republicans keep blocking these proposals. So truly, the only way to protect ourselves from this mass purging of our government to put in, as you said, an army of loyalists is to give us a Democratic president because a Republican president, which is now going to be Trump, is going to do this. And I think it's very important that Americans are kind of acutely aware of these plans when they go to the polls in 2024. So let's go from Schedule F, which really would allow Trump to implement these things, because I as you said, there would be no guardrails anymore. No one would be like, actually, that's illegal. Or actually, you have to go through this process. Or actually, we have a law that says don't do that. He's like, you are fired. And put this person in that says, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, I will do that. And let's switch to Agenda 47, which I have to say, as horrified as I am by Project 2025, which I really am, it was written by the Heritage Foundation. It was written by you know people from the Federalist Society. It was written by all these people that are very organized, thoughtful people. This one is basically Trump's mad thoughts out of the top of his head that people are making into policy. So it feels even more shocking. What are the big things that stand out to you? I like the way you put it where it's kind of like, you know, his his mad ravings. It's like when Obama had the anger translator and the Keen Peel skit, like they're <laughs> they, so like good. what they're doing with Agenda 47, his staff is like translating his screeds. Because if you go on the website, it's essentially just him going on these rants and raves, and then they're adding policy thinking around it. And what really stands out to me is just, especially on the immigration front, just the sheer volume and scale of of what they plan to do. So, I mean, obviously, there's the vindictive side of of the, the Department of Justice purging and defunding that and going after his enemies. But what will really have a direct impact on some of our day to day lives almost immediately is this mass deportation effort that he's going to unleash. He's talking about millions of undocumented immigrants a year, ending birthright citizenships. And he's also talking about how certain doc- current documented immigrants maybe shouldn't be documented, right? So which, how far back are you going to do this birthright citizenship ending, right? And then he's talking about sending National Guard and local police after immigrants. So like, let's say a blue state 
were to refuse to you know, enforce some of this, to have their local police or their National Guard round up just regular, average working, undocumented immigrants, there's talk of sending in a red state National Guard into a blue state to then enforce this. Now you're talking interstate uh, conflict, right? Like it, it's really just an unhinged Stephen Miller mega mind creation. And he's openly talking about it to the New York Times, Stephen Miller is. And it's really under the, underpinned by that basis of his belief of immigrants poisoning the blood of, of America, that, that Hitler-esque quote that he continues to do. It's disgusting. And it's obviously the border issue is probably the issue of this year, given all of the fear mongering that that's come up to this. He literally single handedly shot down the bipartisan border bill so that he can continue to campaign on this because he wants to fear monger and then crack down. Yeah. So let's let's talk about that immigration. I mean, as you said, Trump kiboshed the bipartisan border bill that had been negotiated by Republicans and Democrats. He wants to run on the idea that the border is broken, so fixing the border does not help him. He wants to immediately stop what he calls the invasion at our southern border and put an end to illegal immigration completely. And as part of this plan, he says, as you were mentioning, that he will immediately direct U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement to undertake the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. He will also target people living in the United States who he claims harbor sympathies to illegals and revoke student visas of anyone who, quote unquote, espouses anti-American views. So take that freedom of speech, right? The government is now going to deport you for anything that they don't like that you say. Again, if you're someone right now who is protesting, say, what's happening in Gaza, right? If you are here on a student visa, on a work visa, prepare to have that visa re revoked if Trump becomes president. Because even people like me, who is a citizen, Trump could easily consider me anti-American because I am not pro-Trump, right? I could very easily be deported back to my home country of Canada for my anti-American views if I'm not rounded up and put into a camp with other, other you know, anti-American traitors. The plan is basically to get rid of anybody who does not agree with him, who will challenge him, who will stand up to him, not just in government jobs, but from the country itself. He's also pledged to put in what he calls ideological screenings for all immigrants. And that is in order to bar what he calls dangerous, lunatic haters, bigots, and maniacs, and anyone who empathizes with radical Islamic terrorists, extremists, and anti-American views. So again, that is kind of anyone that doesn't agree with Trump himself. But I have to revert back again to the, if you are someone who is worried about the people in Palestine, if you're empathetic to that, that puts a target on your back, just like it puts a target on any Democrat or liberal's back who would be considered a maniac and a hater under a second Trump administration. Like, this is terrifying stuff. Yeah. I mean, he explicitly said for those protesting Israel as well as a part of that student visa thing, this is free speech stuff. You know, these aren't these aren't explicit pro-Hamas group people, right? These aren't terrorist cells, right? These are people who are just fighting for, for human rights, right? Like they're totally valid protests there. And he's talking about ending their student visas, these ideological screenings in legal immigration as well, not just, you know, asylum seeking, which a process he wants to totally upend. You know, what will be in these ideological screenings? Is it going to say, what are your opinions on Donald Trump? It's this it theme. Will. It's this theme throughout the entire agenda where it's about loyalty to Donald. He, he puts it all under the guise of patriotism. Loyalty to Trump is then henceforth this patriotic view. And if you don't abide by this, this loyalty, this MAGA agenda, then you're essentially un-American is what he's saying through these policies. And it's obviously what he's felt. We saw him try to do a lot of these things, believe it or not, in the, in the first term. And because he didn't have those loyalists, Jeff Sessions was terrible enough, right? And some of these earlier administration officials were horrible. But even some of them were like, hey, man, some of this is illegal. Like even Bill Barr had a line at the end there. It was like, oh, well, I don't want to get indicted, you know, right? So, but these next people, they believe they've corrupted the courts enough. They believe they've corrupted enough of the institutions that they can now unleash full MAGA id on the, on the country and get away with it. And they might be right. They might and, and, be they right. might, and they might be right if, if, if there's a Republican Congress and if the Supreme Court decides, hey, we're just going to 
you know, if like next year, Clarence Thomas and Alito step down um, after Trump wins, right? And then there's now a reformed, even more radical MAGA SCOTUS. Like there are these belief systems that they can get away with all this. And there's a lot at stake. I, I do need <laughs> to back up a bit to Trump's plan to reinstate childhood separation at the border, but also to end, like you said, birthright citizenship, which I really do need to kind of hone yeah. in on because birthright citizenship is, it's part of the constitution. It's in the 14th amendment. It's been there since just after the civil war. It is an essential part of our constitution. If you're born in America, you're an American, right? And you get all the rights of being an American. And his plan is to end that uh, constitutionally protected right by using an executive order that basically has no legal basis. And he just thinks his Supreme Court is going to go along with it. But the order would prevent all federal agencies from granting automatic citizenship to the children of people who he says are in the U.S. illegally. It would require at least one parent to be a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident for their children to be eligible for passports, social security numbers, other benefits. And I understand that some people might go, well, uh, okay, well, that make, that makes sense. Like you, you should have to be an American citizen or at least be a permanent resident or whatever. But here's the thing, and I want people to always remember this. If you pass an unconstitutional executive order that allows the president and his people to pick and choose who gets to be a citizen, whose birthright counts, you have opened a door you don't even want to consider walking through. Because if they can do that, if they can say, oh, no, I'm sorry, you don't get to be a citizen. They, then who says they can't say, oh, I'm sorry, you don't get to be a citizen if you don't speak English, if you aren't Christian, if you aren't straight, if you don't pass this loyalty test to Donald Trump. Essentially, anyone who doesn't bend the knee could just not get citizenship. So this is crazy. I understand it might fall into the courts, but I do not think he will care. In fact, the fact that it's being proposed should really terrify us all. And I, I think we need to be really serious about what he is really planning and where his loyalties really lie. Yeah. And and honestly, this is a, that's a great point you brought up about the choosing, picking and choosing who is yeah. a citizen because you know where that ex, you know what citizenship extends to? Voting. This is a method in which you control who the voting populace is, right? And I know it might sound extreme to some people, but he's saying this stuff out loud, right? This is like this is none of the stuff we're, we're talking about here is really just some kind of report or some anonymous sourcing. This is Donald Trump's own words on video on his site in Project 2025 and Agenda 47 explicitly. And he recently said in a rally, there are people coming in from, I don't want to do the impression on here. I, I'm a little bit rusty, so I'm going to hold back the Donald impression this time. But he said that there are people coming in from all over the all over the world. Um, they're speaking languages no one has ever heard of, right? Like, so so now he's now he's weapon. Now now you're right. He's talking about languages now. What what is that going to lead to? And if you get to this place where he can just bypass Congress, he can do whatever he wants. Obviously, a lot of this will be held up in the courts. But a lot of these courts, like the Alabama one, for example, that was citing God and the Bible, it's not irrational to believe that a court would uphold one of these and. What does he consider documented? If someone was a green card holder and someone had a baby as a green card holder, is their child not documented? I'm a first generation American. I'm, my parents are both from Sierra Leone. Would my citizenship get revoked because he doesn't like what I'm saying about him on the broadcast and in my writing? Like it's it's it's, it's scary. Um, but you know, obviously yeah. we have agency here. But like, it, I think it's just so important. There is stuff on the second term, but like Agenda 47 for specifically, for some reason, like a lot of it is kind of just coming from him. Like all the top YouTube videos are him when you type in Agenda 47. It's not people really explaining the threat. So I think it's important for us to keep continue to like break down the details of this and what it could lead to. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, it, we don't want to become a Russia, you know, where the leader just gets to do whatever he wants to do, say whatever he wants to say, lock up whoever he wants to lock up, pick and choose who you can be, who you can love, what you can do. That's what Putin does. And, you know, you look at him killing Alexei Navalny, which we all know he did. And then he has his police rounding up anyone who went to the funeral, right? Like they have cameras and they're just rounding up the people that went to the funeral. That's terrifying. And if you don't think that's what would happen here, you are sorely mistaken. Now, you mentioned American education. And let's let's talk about American education because, as I've said, the plan from Project 2025 
is to shut down the Department of Education and to return all education decisions to the states. But Trump does want to continue to wield a huge amount of influence over local schools and colleges. Now, even if we just take Trump out of it for a second and we think about returning education to the states, we have to remember that a large amount of these red states right now are already very busy underfunding public schools, doing things like demonizing critical race theory and DEI initiatives. They're banning books. They're calling gay teachers or anyone who talks about being gay groomers. These are the states that are currently pushing unsustainable voucher programs so they get to pick and choose what children get in education and what they get to teach them. This plan means that more of those people will be in charge of everything and there will be no federal protections for things like segregation, national standards, that kind of thing. Exactly. And it's interesting that he wants to shut down the Department of Education and then essentially then continue to wield federal power. Yeah, he right? wants he's the talking Trump about Department a, of yeah, Education. Yeah. He's yeah. talking about reinstating the 1776 Commission. Basically, from the top down, he wants to inf- inflict patriotic values and he wants prayer back in schools. He's talking about taking on critical race theory. So a lot of what we've seen in Florida, you can expect now being pushed at the, the federal level. Stuff like Don't Say Gay, which obviously a lawsuit deflected that Still, coming from the federal level now, if you have like a Speaker Mike Johnson, if you have Republicans in Congress willing to back that, you could have some real legislation passed. One of the, the, the most horrifying parts of it is he wants to sue and basically withhold funding from a lot of universities, billions in endowments, he said, and take that to fund an American academy. Um, if people don't know what Ahmed is talking about, here's the thing. He plans to take billions of dollars from private universities. He's mentioned Harvard as one of them by taxing them, by fining them, by suing them, and then using that money, which is essentially money he has stolen to create what are called American academies, which will be a free online college without quote, wokeness that teaches patriotic education that he will then force American employers to recognize as a bachelor's degree. He's going to take money from legitimate colleges, start an online college, which he already failed at doing, by the way, with Trump University. Then he's going to force employers to say that's a bachelor's degree, but he's going to teach patriotic American values without wokeness and call that an education. And so this is terrifying. It is real. It is exactly what he plans to do. And this is along with doing things like giving funding preferences to states and school districts that abolish tenure for teachers, adopting merit-based rewards for quote unquote, good teachers with no sense of what that standard of good would be. He wants to allow for the direct election of school principals by parents. He wants to cut funding for any schools that have a vaccine or mask mandate. So we can all look forward to our children getting smallpox and polio and measles again, because there will be no vaccine mandates, even with vaccines we've had for 50, 60 years. He wants to go back to advancing the Christian nationalist agenda of Project 2025, as you said, bringing prayer back to schools, but not all prayers. It's not like they're going to let devout Muslims who pray five times a day, you know, twice, which we'd be during school hours to like bring out their prayer mats and face in the East. That's not what's happening. We're talking about Christian prayer. Trump has said he wants a say in what they teach in school, that he will fight for patriotic education under his administration. Students will quote, learn to love their country, not hate it like they're taught right now. And they will promote the nuclear family, including the proper roles. This is the words, the proper roles of mothers and fathers and things that make women and men different and unique. I'm actually like having such a hard time with this. I can't even tell you, I feel sick talking about it because the whole thing is so incredibly possible because we could literally sleepwalk into this Nazi fever dream by not understanding what he plans to do, even though he is telling us what he plans to do. Exactly. It's just, when you're reading, everything you just said was verbatim off of his website. Yes. Like, this is not something that someone can come in and say, oh, these... These uh, hysterical liberals, liberals are, lying, are, about me. are yeah. lying or they're, they're, you know, just being, they're, they're promising a dictator. They always say this. He said he's going to 
essentially certify specific teachers that uphold patriotic values, the election of principles as a reason why that doesn't exist. Do you want Marjorie Taylor Greene as a principal near you because your area happens to be a little bit more Republican? Like, this isn't labeling all of Christianity. Real Christians don't like this. But the Christian nationalist movement here is all embedded throughout all of this. And uh, the Heritage Foundation president, Kevin Roberts, was talking about this in depth and in, in talking about these authoritarian leaders that uphold this. If you look at this, there's just this ongoing thread of this ideological abuse of, of faith. You know, for those who have seen Dune, like this, this just like you're watching these people take advantage of these 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 devout people with be their belief systems to enforce these just un-American and, and depraved uh, controlling anti-freedom of speech objectives. Like none of this stuff being forced down our, our children's throats is, is going to be helpful. Like the stuff with the nuclear family, like what do you mean? Were you going to tell people how to live their lives? Like Yes, of course. I'm going to get a bow back in my hair and greet my husband at the door with a martini and stay home with my children as I was expected to. Like enough of this talking yeah. on podcast, lady. Get back yeah. in the kitchen. You know, that is literally yeah. the plan. Yeah. Get back in the kitchen and have a cross on and give us give a state of the union rebuttal uh, where you're talking about insane, you know, conspiracy theories like that's that's where they think a woman belongs. Right. Like the messages that they're saying, it's these really these gender roles that they're now going to enforce in schools. It's just unbelievable to see it written out. And I still I know I'm not shocked by any of the beliefs, but we used to have to see leaks of this stuff like, oh, Donald ruminated about putting a moat around the border to put alligators in it, right? Like that was a leak during the presidency. And like, you're like, oh, wow, that's wild. But now you see him saying stuff equally wild in public and he is tied in the polls. If the refrigerator revolutionized food storage and the dishwasher revolutionized food cleanup, Lomi revolutionizes food waste. So what is a Lomi? Lomi is the world's first smart waste appliance that cuts your trash in half by transforming your food scraps into nutrient-rich plant food. If you listen to this show, you know I love this machine. All that food that goes to waste in your house, all the leftovers, the things that die in your crisper drawer, instead of going into a landfill, you can turn all that food waste into plant food. In just four hours, Lomi transforms almost everything you eat into nutrient-rich plant food with the push of a button. It cuts your trash in half, eliminates bugs and odors in your kitchen. And if you want to, you can feed it to your lawn or garden as an all natural fertilizer that you create from your own food. Plus, Lomi promises you the best possible experience, which is why they're one of the only kitchen appliances that has a full, no questions asked, lifetime warranty on all their devices. And when you purchase a continued subscription, you automatically get upgraded to a new Lomi device every three years. Honestly, once I found out that food waste made up a huge portion of my family's personal carbon footprint, I was really happy to reduce the amount of garbage that I sent to a landfill. We all want to do our part by the planet, but this is just such an easy way to do yours. So whether you want to start making a positive environmental impact or just grow a beautiful garden, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash politics girl and use the promo code politics girl to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to lomi.com slash politicsgirl and use the promo code politicsgirl at checkout. Thank you, Lomi, for sponsoring this episode. You guys really created a super cool product. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can hold on to more bacteria than a toilet seat? Which can lead to things like acne, allergies, and stuffy noses. Well, they can, which is why I'm so happy to be telling you about Miracle Made. Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding like sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent up to 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Miracle Made products are silver infused to prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresher three times longer than other sheets. Plus, they're just really nice. Incredibly high quality bedding without that incredible high price. So stop sleeping on bacteria. Sleep clean with Miracle. See for yourself. Go to trymiracle.com slash politicsgirl to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift, if you order today, you can save over 40%. Plus, if you use our promo code politicsgirl at checkout, you will get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. 
Upgrade your sleep today with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash politicsgirl and use the code politicsgirl to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that is trymiracle.com slash politicsgirl to treat yourself. The older I get, the more I find myself wanting to be more intentional about how I live and eat and take care of my body. Everything I can do to keep myself from falling apart and keep my mind and body running smoothly, I really make an effort to try. Now I've talked about Mosh Bars here before. Mosh is a company founded by Maria Shriver and her son Patrick Schwarzenegger with a simple mission, to create a conversation about brain health through food, education, and research. Mosh joined forces with the world's top scientists and functional nutritionists to make something beyond your average protein bar. Each Mosh bar is made with ingredients that support brain health, like lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s. And with six delicious flavors, each bar also gives you 12 grams of protein. Plus, they also have a line of plant-based protein bars if that's how you eat. I've become quite committed to Mosh bars. I keep them everywhere, in my bag, in my office, sometimes even in my car. It helps me keep going when I forget to eat or need a snack that actually fuels my body and my brain. I love them. I used to say my favorites were the lemon and white chocolate and the peanut butter crunch ones, but now I kind of love them all. And here's the best part. Mosh donates a portion of all proceeds from your order to fund gender-based brain health research through the women's Alzheimer's movement. Two thirds of all Alzheimer's patients are women and Mosh is working closely to close that gap between men and women's health research. It's a personal mission for Maria. Her father suffered from Alzheimer's, and since then, she and Patrick have dedicated themselves to finding ways to help other families dealing with this debilitating disease. So if you want to find a way to give back to others and fuel your body and brain, Mosh Bars are the perfect choice. Head to moshlife.com slash politicsgirl to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six-count trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six-count trial pack. M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash politics girl. So let's talk about international uh, plans here with Agenda 47, right? So internationally, Trump plans to what he calls reassess America's participation in NATO, which we know he's always wanted to be out of NATO from the beginning. That is Putin's plan. Trump is entirely on board with that. And he claims that going forward, all European countries will need to pay the United States for protection. So he basically wants to make America a mobster state where we will hurt you if you don't do what we say. But if you want our protection, you'll have to pay us and we will change the terms at will. This plan solidifies that America is no longer the good guy, but simply muscle for hire. Anyone who might stand up to this plan from the military to anyone in his administration will either be purged through Schedule F or will be dissuaded by things like what Trump plans to do to General Mark Milley if he gets back into control, which he's already said he should probably be, you know, killed because people who might stand up to him are going to remember what he's doing to his former Joint Chiefs of Staff, who called Trump a wannabe dictator when his administration was over. And Trump is talking about hanging him for treason, right? So you do that to a couple of military officers. And guess what? People stop fighting back. Like, this is uh, literally the plan. And I, I think we need to be entirely sincere with people about what is really going on here, because I just think that this is, it's so serious and it's so terrifying And uh, people need to really, like, you can go read it. It's not just the two of us telling you. Exactly. And, and, you know, when you're talking, we'll get into, like, the the prosecutions and the DOJ stuff in a second, because all those threats, like you said, are going to be used to enforce a lot of this. Like, that Mark Milley calling for his death is not hyperbolic. Trump did that. But basically, this this use of the military, I I like how you said it for hire, because it really, it's like, what, is he going to hire Eric Prince to run this? Yes. have, like, a mercenary? Army, yes. right? Like it's talking Eric about Eric Prince, this the trans- brother of Betsy DeVos, our former yeah. uh, education secretary, and the family that basically owns BlackRock. Like, yeah. let's not pretend and these people are not completely all connected. Exactly, and and really, what what this is is this transactional view of foreign policy that that Donald has that just is not cohesive with the way America runs foreign policy. We're supposed to be upholding the post World War II era. You know, NATO is. For you know, seventy plus years has upheld that peace, and obviously there's there's been some failings lately. But Biden came in and up and re upholstered essentially NATO and really boosted it after Trump sought during his presidency to actively erode it, constantly talking about them not paying their fair share. And recently, he said that if they don't pay, 
he would encourage Putin to do whatever the hell he wants. That's a quote. So essentially encouraging Putin to invade NATO countries if Trump deems that they don't pay enough. And he keeps moving, if, if anyone remembers his presidency, he moved the goalpost on how much they should be paying constantly. So whatever he deems that they're contributing to this, like there's a reason why American diplomacy isn't fully transactional so that we can be guided by values. Obviously, we have our shortcomings and there are things that we're not always living up to on, on human rights and things that you can even say currently today we aren't. But at least it's an aspirational goal, right? He wants to cozy up to Orban, who he had at Mar-a-Lago days ago, who the Heritage Foundation said is a model for the U.S., who Tucker Carlson hangs with. This is the Hungarian authoritarian leader that just espouses absolute far-right lunacy. He's cracked down on media. He contests LGBTQ rights. He He's changed the court system. He's like he's done everything you would want to do. It's just an absolute playbook for authoritarianism. Yeah. He's spoken against mixed race, uh, you know, countries like he and and he's been espoused and promoted by Trump in the right wing media. And there's this pro Putin alliance. Essentially, there's this far right authoritarian movement that is globally co- collaborative, like we discussed last episode. These are his allies. He wants to continue what he did during the presidency, cozy up to our adversaries and really harm our allies. Ukrainian aid will not happen. And if you're someone that wants peaceful resolution to what's going on in Gaza right now, Donald has said he wants Netanyahu to finish the job. Whereas meanwhile, Schumer and Biden are recently trying to pressure Netanyahu to pull back, not go into Rafa. If you care about the Palestinian people, you don't want Donald to come in and enforce that. So essentially we're dealing with a far right authoritarian foreign policy that will further harm human rights if uh, Mr. Donald Trump is elected again. Yeah. I mean, Trump has claimed that he, once he's inaugurated, he will have settled the war between Russia and Ukraine on the first day. And he'll do that by stopping American support and letting Putin just take over Ukraine completely. But then he'll allow him to just kind of keep going in Europe if people aren't paying up. And that is a terrifying reality that we need to be really serious about. Same as you're saying with the Middle East. If you're someone who cares about people in Gaza, please understand that while Biden is delivering aid and trying to negotiate with the right wing Netanyahu to get hostages released and protect the Palestinian people, Trump will let Netanyahu nuke Gaza if that's what he wants to do. Trump has made it very clear that he has zero love for Muslim nations, plans to reinstate the Muslim ban in all of America again, but this time make it bigger and more wide ranging. So if you are someone who cares about the innocents in Gaza, allowing Trump to take over will not only not serve your agenda, it will actually actively hurt these people. We could go on about so many things. I want to switch for a second to medical because... For me, as someone with a terrible lung disease, this idea of completely ending the Affordable Care Act and not replacing it with anything, just ending it, ending protections for people with pre-existing conditions, reinstating lifetime caps for children that were born with a heart condition from the beginning of their life and then can't get insurance past their fifth birthday, this kind of thing. The Republicans already plan to eliminate Social Security and Medicare. So if you are sick or old in this country, you really need to understand that under these new plans, no one will protect you. If you elect Republicans, they are going to leave you out to dry because they consider you a financial drain and your death would actually be more profitable to them. And I really want people to understand that these are not things that we are just saying these are things they have written down to do. So I'm not being cute or hyperbolic when I say your death means nothing to these people. There are literally millions of Americans, millions who vote for Republicans who have no idea they're actually about to lose their social security or their medical insurance because the Republican representatives see them as a drain on the system. Their very existence is a net negative on the country's spreadsheet. So this is the same party telling us that the retirement age should be 70, that you can literally work until you die, or there's no reason for you to ever have to retire. Ben Shapiro just recently said that on his show. And I'm like, bro, you sit at a microphone all day. Like you're not laying bricks. Like good luck to the 70 year old that's supposed to do that. I don't know how else to explain it to people, but You have to talk to the people in your life. And if you are sick or if you are older, you have to tell them that the Republican Party considers them useless, that they should be washed from our country. We don't need to support them anymore. And they're going to try to avoid the cost of keeping them alive. And we also need to be understanding that 
by extension in the medical world, Trump says he plans to have Congress pass a bill establishing that there are only two genders determined at birth, recognized in the United States. And with that in mind, his administration will crack down on any gender affirming care, declaring that any hospitals or healthcare providers who offer transitional hormones, surgery, no longer meet federal health or safety standards and will be blocked from receiving federal funds. So that is any hospital in America because all hospitals receive federal funds for things like Medicare and Medicaid. So the trans community has already taken a major hit from the Republican Party and Agenda 47 plans to make it 10 times worse for them by banning all gender affirming care for adults, for children, for anyone in this country. So under Trump's Agenda 47, trans people will essentially cease to exist in this country. I mean, of course, they will still be here, but they won't be getting any treatment. And it is a horrible, anti-American, hateful, bigoted way to look at the world. And I think Americans need to see that as clearly as possible. Yeah, he's really talking about declassifying them from existence. You know, essentially saying that they, if you identify as non-binary, trans, if you are someone who does not sit within the binary of male or female, you just don't exist uh, legally. Um, that's what that's what he's trying to do. And then through that, he's going to restrict the gender affirming care. And even if some of that doesn't pass, like that bill doesn't pass Congress, there's so much that he plans to do uh, via EO, taking away the labels and the various terms used to describe trans people, just taking that out of existence in the federal government. So there's all of that. You've described perfectly the Affordable Care Act repeal and the damage that would do. The cuts to Medicare, he recently on CNBC said, Social Security and Medicare entitlements they are on the table to be cut. And then also another thing I want to touch on, since you already expanded on all those so perfectly, is abortion. There's been a recent report that said he's toying with the idea of he supports a 16-week abortion ban because it's an even number. And, you know, mathematician Donald loves his uh, specific numbers of uh, to in order to, you know, infringe upon people's rights. They got to be even an even number of weeks of, of rights infringement. So 16 weeks, he likes the sound of that. So that's what he's going with. And then we have, meanwhile, Project 2025. Interestingly, you have to go there because on, on Agenda 47, there's no mention of it because he knows how, how horrible politically this is. Uh, we saw this play out in the primaries with his weakness with moderates and right-leaning independents, the Kiely voters. They care about abortion. The executive orders being drafted by Project 2025 use existing law like the Comstock Act, this, this archaic law that has not been used that would ban the mailing of abortion-related materials. There are reputable news sources saying that that executive order would be a de facto ban because you could no longer mail abortion equipment or even material related to an abortion. I think we need to be really honest about abortion. He's already said that women should be punished for having abortion. There should be some sort of, you know, legal punishment. He's saying 16 weeks now only because he knows he's a smart man who understands how to run for an election, but he will sign a national abortion ban in a heartbeat. And we need to be incredibly clear about that. Now, if you're someone who's young and you want your human rights and you care about the people in Gaza, you probably also care about the environment. And Trump is saying, you know, his goal is to have the lowest cost energy and electricity in the nation and the world. And to do that, he plans to ramp up all oil drilling on our public lands and natural reserves. And they'll also offer tax breaks to oil and gas and coal producers, which as we all know, are the last people who need freaking tax breaks in America. But he's now claiming to have created the expression drill, baby, drill, which it shouldn't matter, but it's just such a stupid lie considering it was a well-known campaign slogan from the McCain-Palin campaign that was created by Michael Steele, who used to run the RNC back in 2008. But he also plans to roll back all Biden administration efforts to encourage the adoption of electric cars and reverse any proposed pollution limits that Biden has put into effect. He's essentially saying he refuses to acknowledge or fight climate change in any way. He plans to exit the Paris Climate Accords again, which he did when he was president last time, and then we rejoined under Biden. And anything that Biden has tried to target to help our environment, like light bulbs, gas stoves, dishwashers, shower heads, improving the long-term health of um, our country. He wants to roll that back too. And it seems that the plan is to literally destroy the environment while also making sure that the very richest polluters get even richer. And 
then of course, he also plans to take the government money that was going into EVs and divert it into flying cars. Yeah, flying yeah. I mean, cars. yeah, he's he's talking about essentially completely deregulating all of the energy companies, uh, leaving the players climate accord, you know, another multilateral agreement. And then, yeah, I guess funneling that towards freedom cities, which would be these Jetson he wants to build on federal land. He's he's been more vague about this one, so I don't I don't you know this one's probably more of a wild pronouncement. But like, yeah, he's talking about building these like futuristic cities off the back of all of these energy builds. But basically, he does not those freedom cities won't matter if you are destroying the environment, right? And meanwhile, this is all connected, right? Like if you're deregulating all of these environmental protections, if you're ensuring like they're taking on like they don't like water. I saw, especially on, on Twitter recently, a lot of these um, Republicans are against uh, regulating, you know, lead and, and water and like any any regulation to to really protect our health. Meanwhile, while you're degrading the environment, now you're taking away those services that you that you talked about, Lee, Affordable Care Act and, and healthcare. Now we're going to be unable to we're going to be made, made unhealthy by the environment itself, while also losing the safety net that's going to care for us there while these energy barons get rich and while Donald just siphons that money into the administration and likely his pockets and contractors that he's friendly with. It's, it's really just, if you care it's about the environment at all, it's, it's a full yeah. kleptocracy is what he's outlining here. And every piece of the agenda is connected. And uh, interestingly, if you go into agenda 47 and then you can find the connected piece to project 2025, that goes into way more robust detail because they're the ones that you know, like we talked about last time, Project 2025 has all those mentions of the EPA and how they plan on eroding it. I did want to touch on one thing on the medical side that they kind of want to use in environmental stuff. You know, some of the way that they're regulating our health, like with the FDA and abortion pills, they want to just revoke that approval, right? And they want to like call it environment and a hazard, right? Through the EPA, interestingly, like they want to just, they're, they're, they're finding every single lever that they can to inflict their agenda. And it's just over the years, it's been frustrating to see how many average Americans don't know anything about any of these plans. And if they did, they would not support them at all. It's, it's clear. And I think uh, hopefully as we get close to the election, we keep ringing the bell about this, they'll understand. But like this, all the stuff we've discussed really gets topped off with this enforcement mechanism, which will be the DOJ, which will inflict the real fear and kind of put people in place and the opposition in place against this stuff. The DOJ, which under Project 2025 will be run by the president himself, as opposed to a separate organization. And I, I think I just want to go back to what you were saying about these cities, these freedom cities that he's talking about, because a lot of this does sound very Jetson-esque. It is very Trump-esque, like I'm just coming up with it off the top of my head, but they're writing policy to make it work. And here's the thing. Trump is has plans to build what he calls 10 freedom cities on federal land, which will he award to private companies with the best developmental proposals. And then he will prioritize moving young families into these cities with proper patriotic American life. And for all other cities, I guess where us godless heathens live, he is going to make them more beautiful. He's going to rename our streets for real patriotic Americans. He's going to send the National Guard in to patrol woke cities, like you mentioned before. They're going to send red state National Guard into blue state cities to deal with what he says is our struggling violence and our racist Marxist ideology and to keep us in line. He is basically planning to use federal government funding to strong arm local governments to do what he thinks is best for those cities. He has pledged a full federal takeover of Washington, D.C. that he calls a dirty, crime-ridden death trap unbefitting of the country. This is federal government overreach at its most egregious. He has said that he wants to bring back stop and frisk, which you might remember was declared unconstitutional in 2013. But he says that local police should be empowered to shoot suspected shoplifters in the act. He said that if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot leaving the store. So I want to be very clear to people in this America that Trump is laying out for us in Agenda 47, in the Republican America that the Republicans are supporting, making this man their nominee for president, you can rape a woman. The government will force you to have 
your baby. Then you can sue for parental rights of your baby that you raped into a woman. But if you steal a loaf of bread for your family because you can no longer afford it, because you don't have health insurance or social security, you can expect to be shot. These are the plans that they are actually writing down. Trump plans to impose the death penalty on drug dealers, on anyone he says is a drug smuggler, anyone who traffics people. And it sounds hardcore and you might say, well, those are all bad people, but we have to remember it is his justice department and him who will be making the call who are these people. So he can actually just willy nilly kill us and say we were a drug dealer or we were a smuggler or we were a, a, a pat- not a patriot. He is just whipping out the death penalty willy nilly. They want to move all homeless people to what are called tent cities. And Those tent cities will be set up on open parcels of inexpensive land and homeless people will be given the choice of being arrested or receiving treatment if they don't move to these cities that he's going to put on the outskirts of town. It is like science fiction, Blade Runner type world that he's trying to create. He also wants to bring back large scale mental institutions to institutionalize people he deems deranged. No word on what the deciding factor on what deranged would be. But we have to remember that we live in an America where we used to institutionalize women all the time who talked back to their husbands or had opinions or got pregnant outside of marriage. We used to lock them up. And that is the America we can look forward to if we allow this man power again. I think we really need to be incredibly clear that Trump and his people are trying to create There is no other way to say it, a Nazi style administration, and they aren't even trying to hide it. There are so many more things that we could discuss today that we simply don't have time to go through. I will include articles and links in the show notes for you to check out if you want to know more about Agenda 47 and see for yourself. But Trump keeps talking about communist, Marxist, fascist, radical left thugs. But this isn't about ideology. There is no way Trump knows what Marxist is or fascist is. He's just using these words as boogeyman to scare people into voting for something that is actually scary. And he's implying that his political enemies, which are, of course, any of us, all Democrats, any of us who speak up against him, even Republicans who are no not Trump fans, anyone he believes has betrayed him will fall into one of those categories. Yeah, I mean, you've outlined a lot there, and it's really just overwhelming when you really get, get into the details, right? And and I think it's an, it's important, and I'm glad we went into a lot of it in, into this episode. But like you said, there's even more, you know, with the DOJ and and then the prosecution. He's talking about the Impoundment Act. He's going to refuse to essentially issue congressionally approved funds. Like he's going full authoritarian um, here, and. It's, it's really concerning. And I think every American should recognize that what the contrasts are. We have, uh, regardless of your point of view on, on Joe Biden and essentially what's going on in, in Gaza and, and everything else that's happening, you know, he listens, right? They're, 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 you're talking about a government that can still be effectively pressured to do what you want. You're talking about someone who actually exists within a government system that we have previously had in our country for the last few centuries. Whereas Donald Trump is talking about totally upending that American system, one where every single new administration that comes in can bring in hundreds of thousands of new people to just inflict an agenda, someone who can set their own law, someone who can decide who gets prosecuted, someone who can decide whether or not their political opponent gets prosecuted, who can define the terms that we use. And if those terms are used, you get fired or blacklisted. Or if you speak out against him and his patriotic values, you know, we're talking about the FTC and the FCC. Do you lose your broadcast license? Will there be new mechanisms to just control the ways we think and speak? And it sounds hyperbolic. A lot of what we talked about, it just sounds wild. If you were to just teleport to this time from eight years ago, you'd be like, wow, this doesn't even sound real. But everything we've discussed in this episode is written down in black and white. And they are openly talking about it to multiple credible news organizations. It is out there in plain writing, in Trump speeches, in Project 2025's 920-page manifesto. President of the Heritage Foundation is doing interviews proudly about this agenda now. They're brazen. They think they're smarter than the American people. I don't think so. I think we'll. I think we will win. I'm still optimistic to this day, even though now he's the nominee. 
There were some cracks shown in the primaries. We can beat this, but we have to do our part to not only educate and inform the public, but it's going down in the private chats with our friends and our families. It's going down in on social media. Use the tools and the information that you're given to inform everyone around you about what's coming. I know it's scary, but if you just want to continue your life and not have government inflict upon you, I would say vote Joe Biden. Uh, and also, there's an optimistic vision there that he laid out in the State of the Union you can watch as well to contrast with what we just discussed here if you want to improve your mood after watching this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so true, right? I mean, like, like, <laughs> like, we're not – here's the thing. The plan is to consolidate power around himself and his family like any good dictator, right? Ronald McDaniel is out as the chair of the RNC. His daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, is in, right? It, he wants to get rid of anyone who doesn't love him. And I, I can't – believe we're at a place where we have a leader who's so blatantly using the language of Nazi Germany to degrade and dehumanize people as the nominee for our president. At the end of the day, he's already said he plans to implement the Insurrection Act on the first day of his term. So he has a mechanism in place to quell any demonstrations, like when we had the Women's March when he was elected in 2017. No more of that in Donald Trump's America. And I I keep thinking about The Handmaid's Tale, the the version they put on television. And I had to stop watching it because it felt too close to home. And now it really feels too close to home because there's there's a couple episodes where women are first denied access to their bank accounts and then they're asked to leave their jobs. And then when they protest in the street, the military opens fire on them and that stops all future protests. And it's that type of dark, dystopian future that we are looking at. And I, like you said, I literally don't care how you feel about Joe Biden. He is not planning to burn the American government and democracy to the ground. The fact that he still wants to protect voting rights and a woman's right to her own body and social security and the planet is just a tremendous freaking bonus. But he's not looking to burn America down. Trump's proposals are so wildly different than President Joe Biden's proposals that we are looking at two completely different Americas, and it is literally good versus evil or normal versus crazy, and we can't screw this up. So I really want to thank you for joining us today, Ahmed. I honestly can't believe we're here, but I think we have to make sure we don't stay here by shutting down this wannabe dictator and his people for good in November 2024. And we have to send a very loud and very clear message to all of these people that would take us down this path, that their vision for America is not ours and we will not be having it, not now and not ever. That is, that is the right message. We will not be having it. It's totally within our power to, to vote him down once again. We beat him once. It's ever since 2016, the MAGA movement has been losing. 2018, 2020, 2022, 2023, special election in New York last month. We can do this if we all stay activated. And it's not just on you, the voters. Me as a journalist, I'm trying my best. I don't think it's, it's biased to be pro-democracy. And I honestly think it's up our duty to uphold the truth and say there's an un-American maniac that is absolutely coming for, for us. And also, I think the first term of his presidency is being whitewashed, and that was a warning as well. The first term had so many warnings for, for term two, and I think as Americans, we just have to, to state clearly what's truly at stake. Joe Biden, you know, he might be old, but Trump is old too, and he also wants to be a dictator. So the choice is kind of clear, right? Yeah. As Joe Biden said in State of the Union, you know, there's, there's old and then there's your vision. And his vision is fresh and new. And Trump's vision is old and backward. And we have to go into the future. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for talking about this. And I'm sorry it's so depressing, but let's just kick ass and then say, stay down. Once yeah, they're there. Let's, <laughs> let's, you know, if you look at the trajectory, we are on the way. We can make this the last gasp of the Confederacy is really what I see this, this movement, right? It's kind of a lost cause type thing. We can make it a last gasp or it can be the start of something really terrible. And I'm leaning towards, we just, we put down the movement at the ballot box and make them reform, come back to the table, a reformed and more moderate party, and then maybe re-enter the political sphere. But I think we need to send that message electorally every single election year until they moderate on their end. Completely. Thanks for having me. Let's get this done. Until next time.
So that was Ahmed Baba reminding us that we aren't being hyperbolic when we say Trump has a dystopian nightmare planned for America with Agenda 47. An America where the National Guard patrols our cities, accused criminals are shot in our streets, our education and our homes are taken over by Christian nationalists, we abandon our foreign allies and our environment, the death penalty is handed out on a whim, and foreign nationals are mass deported. This is an America without Social Security, without the Affordable Care Act, and without any constitutional or job protections for anyone who is not a Trump loyalist. It is a terrifying, un-American, and completely unacceptable alternative, and we simply cannot allow it to come to fruition. I want to thank Ahmed for joining us today, and you for caring enough about democracy to be here. Now go and tell people about Agenda 47. Make them aware of what it is and make them know that we cannot vote to enable it. Thank you so much for being here. It really matters. Until next week, PGA. The Politics Girl podcast is written and performed by me, Lee McGowan, in partnership with the Midas Media Network and produced and edited by Happy Warrior Entertainment. All rights reserved.